Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and right there is Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Oh, hi. Um, oh, hi. We're, we're wrapping up our games, uh, little little mini game series right this now. This was fun. It was so fun, right? I, I think really we did, enjoyed we did it. like a whole five. This is the fifth episode of our little little mini game series. Not little mini game series. This was super fun. The big series. It's a big series. Yeah. And, and we are doing it today talking about what we have learned about failure and what games can teach us about failure in uh, in living our lives with ADHD. And I'm pretty excited about it. I've been doing some reading and uh, it's it, it's good stuff. We should we should learn from failure. That's the lesson you can. I'll save Absolutely. save you a listen. Learn from failure. Moving on. OK, but wait, we're done if you now. don't want to move on. <laughs> uh, you can uh, you can hang with us for the rest of the show. Uh, but first, head over to take control ADHD.com. Get to know us a little bit better. Listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to our mailing list. And we will send you an email each time a new episode is released. Connect with us on Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest at Take Control ADHD. But to really get to know, get to know us, get to know annoying us. <laughs> <laughs> so we can annoy you. So we can annoy you. If you're ready to be annoyed, you should head over to our Discord server. The ADHD Discord server is really, really fun. And we're making some changes in it. It's now prettier. The first step is prettier. Oh. So emojis pretty. everywhere. I oh, love it. So pretty emojis. I've got to, to just, you know, I've been doing reading on making Discord a better place and I'm just doing it and it's great. I'm having a ball. So uh, I think it's great too. I, I think it's super fun. And, and so uh, be on the lookout for more changes to come. Uh, but the point is, uh, you know, if you're just finding this show for the first time, head into the public Discord community. There's right now there's one channel, but there's going to be more. Wink. And uh, we're excited to bring those to you all and hang out and make it a make it a, a place that is good and safe for people beyond just the podcast, but people living with ADHD who want to learn more from one another because we have a great community of those people. So uh, takecontroladhd.com slash discord is the it will take you over to the the log in and sign up now once you get there and you fall in love with the place which you will you should head over to patreon.com slash the adhd podcast and learn about our patreon it's uh fantastic it helps us so so much to continue to do what we do and invest in the uh in what we do for the adhd community and you should check it out uh, for just a few bucks a month it is listener supported community podcasting the works and uh, it, you also get access to all of the super secret channels in Discord. You get access to the member live stream. You can watch along with us uh, as we stumble into the live stream each week. <laughs> okay, just today. We're only stumbling today. But you could see all the, uh, all the mistakes and burps and all that stuff that gets cut from the final show. <laughs> plus, plus, the most important part is you get to stick around after the show for the Q&A that only members get to be a part of. And we love, love that part. So... That's it. Patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. Nikki, we're talking about failure today. Yes, we are. And, what and you have a lot of notes means. in here. Well, so here's the thing. I just find I just find it so interesting. The nature of of games and our perception of failure as a result of the games we play. And, and you know, a lot of the stuff that I was reading is about video games because that's kind of the corner that I live what in. we've but, been talking about. Yeah, but, but so much of this, I think, applies to just gaming and a gaming mindset because what has to come with a gaming mindset is not just the spirit of competition that we are, we're now competing and, and we're all trying to win, but it's also the perspective that we might lose. We might lose because not everybody always wins and why True. do we keep going to these experiences that 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 put us in a perspective of seeking out in that respect failure and what we learned from it so i you know before we start like do you have any just like off the dome thoughts about your own orientation around failure and what that does to you you know psychologically emotionally physically 
You know, I do. And I think it's changed a little bit over time. And I don't know if that's because as you get older, maybe you do get more mature. I don't know. Maybe you do get more wise. Uh, but I'm not a, I'm not as afraid of it. I'm not saying that I'm never afraid of it, but I'm certainly not as afraid of it in a business perspective because, mm-hmm. and you've known me since, well, you've, you've worked with me in this company since day one. You mm-hmm. knew me before that. But I'm not afraid to try things like I will throw it out there. And Mm -hmm. if it doesn't work, I'm okay with that. Like I don't take it as a personal um, character, you know, failure or anything like that. So there's some things that I I'm definitely worth. I think it's worth just throwing it out, see how it sticks, if people like it or if they don't like it. Um, I think in a personal I mean, you're always that's where you kind of get stuck, right? It's like, what's the outcome going to be? What are people going to think? Uh, so it's, I don't know. It's a messy, yeah, it's a messy, it messy. relationship. You it know, I, I, I try to, to get past it and sometimes I do. And sometimes I don't. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't think, I, I think I still have a lot of anxiety around just overt public failure and that hangs with me you know, in the back of my mind, I, it's less, much less though, in the terms of what I do most of my time, which is hanging out on a microphone. Like I, I'm much more uh, comfortable with misspeaking. Uh, and as a result, I think I'm actually better at speaking more fluidly and not, you know, tripping over my own tongue time and time again. I think I'm, I'm editing myself less now than I did you know, 18 years ago, which is, which is nice. It's nice to have a, uh, a, a bit of progress. But when I think of it that way, it is the act of becoming comfortable with the potential for failure that actually makes me more comfortable in actually in doing the job in the first place, right? In not thinking right. so hard about it. You, you know, it's interesting. I think this whole series, you know, we've, we've been talking about games and, and when we came up with this idea around failure, this reel popped up in one of my social medias that said, you know, we learn from failure, not success. We mm-hmm. don't, we don't learn from success because we get the success. We feel it. We think that, okay, we do it again that way. And it's going to still be a success where we learn is when we do fail or it doesn't turn out the way that you want it to turn out. And it's so interesting because I've been thinking about that. I did a, a, a public presentation um, a week ago, and I was happy with the presentation, but there were definitely things that I think I could do better. And so I was really thinking about that and really putting what I, <laughs> this is like, I guess the pro to reels maybe, is that <laughs> it was like <laughs> ingrained in me to think about what can I learn from this and how can I make it better? And, but not sit in, oh, I wish I did it differently. Like not sit in that like agony of, oh, I wonder what people thought. Maybe it wasn't as good. Like, I think it was okay, but you know what I mean? But to be able to kind of take it and say, okay, no, what am I going to do in the future? So I think we have to somehow let go or put aside our past experiences and thoughts and really think forward thinking. Like, what do I do now? I have this information. This is what happened, but what do I do with it? Right, right. How do we use it to grow? How do we use yes. it to to become something different? I so this is this is really I, I think the nut of what has been lingering in the back of my mind, which is the paradox of failure. And uh, as in the game community, this was was largely popularized by Jasper Jewell, uh, and uh, it really addresses the conflict between a game player's desire to avoid failure coupled with their inclination to seek it out, right? We want to avoid the failure, but also we kind of can't keep hunting it, right? And that's that's the piece. Games are the safe environment for players, as Jewel talks about it, the safe environment for players to experiment with failure and learn from it. And in doing so, foster a growth mindset, right, that helps you combat learned helplessness and learned helplessness. We know all about learned helplessness, right? We yes. Know. And we really want to avoid that. Yeah, right. Adapting <laughs> mm-hmm. to things that we can't do by lack of trying to to do them and to succeed over time is can can lead to the spirit of, of learned helplessness. So mm-hmm. uh, it, in Jules writings, many people continue to play games despite experiencing failure reveals that 
personal inadequacies in skills or abilities, albeit within the confines of the game, right? I, I it, that that there are um, that we're it is counterintuitive to usual human behavior where failure is avoided that we seek out things that we have no natural skill in doing. I don't necessarily uh, seek out or have an affinity to learn how to become a better archer. Uh, and yet still, I play games that cause me to, in VR that cause to me to that. need to be uh, have some sort of facility with a bow and arrow, right? Like, right. I'm not a race car driver. I like imagining myself as a race car driver. And I play a lot of VR driving games. That mm -hmm. that's not something a skill that I need to get better at in day to day life. So I seek out doing this thing that I'm bad at, knowing I'm going to fail. Why? I'm human. That's why, like, frankly, mm -hmm. my, that's why we're wired to do that stuff. So we are uh, th the other thing that he found out in his research is we are drawn to games in which we are responsible for failure rather than those that guarantee success. They may even increase the game's difficulty. I should say players increase the game's difficulty if the challenge becomes too monotonous. I just think it's interesting that the same game that produces a sense of inadequacy also promises the ability to repair that inadequacy in many cases immediately. And this has been a thing I really have been hanging my head on. I think we've talked about it over the last couple of weeks. The idea that modern video games, you actually, if you die, they put you right in the same place where you just failed to start doing it again and again. And growing up, that's not how I was conditioned. I was conditioned that it cost money to fail, that I had to keep putting quarters in the uh, in the machine. And mm -hmm. it was, failure was expensive. That conditioning is that failure was very expensive. And so as a result of that conditioning, I didn't want to fail as a high schooler, as a, as a young adult. Like failure was terrifying because I was taught that by games. Right, right. That's kind That's so of amazing, right? We've just, mm -hmm. we've totally turned the table on that. And so for me, like as an adult now, it's hard to learn that it's okay to fail. It's in many cases, like the cost of failure being so low, like failure inflation is dropping. So let's take advantage of it. Rates are low. Go, you know, refinance right. failure today. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> right, like that is the the failure improvement cycle as Jewel calls it, right? It's this psychological loop in which a player is introduced to a goal, fails at achieving it, and then seeks a solution. The cycle repeats again and again and again, offering the opportunity to understand and overcome that failure. So the process of failing in a game is an existential significance for mm -hmm. players. It means that for moment, every moment to moment attempt to avoid failure in a game, can reflect on a player's sense of self and their ambitions in real life. What? Okay, we have to reread that. So I know. the the process of failing in a game has an existential significance for players. For players. This means that each moment to moment attempt to avoid failure in a game can reflect on a player's sense of self and their their ambitions in real life. So think about when you're playing a game, right? What does it tell you about yourself when you are confronted with failure that you either decide to push through feelings of judgment and low self-esteem and actually try again, which games are designed to get you to do, or you decide that that game is clearly not for you? Now, I'm not saying that games are not designed for people. Like, I'm not saying that there are some games I just don't like to play. But I am saying that if there's a game that I like to play and then I fail at it and then I stop playing it as a result of that failure, that's a me problem. That's not a game problem. And that's probably what we're trying to, to get across the other side of. And that's why I love so much, thinking back to last week's conversation with Eddie Matucci, when we're talking about Endeavor RX, his comments about failure, that the game, when they write about the game in their marketing material, is hard. The game is hard, and you're going to be exhausted, and you're not going to want to play. It's going to feel like work, and you have to keep playing. This is why. It's because we're trying to rewire your thinking about you in relationship to failure, that you're okay if you can just get over this hump. You exercise your gaming like a muscle, right? Exercising you your failure like a muscle. 
playing at life. Yes. Yes. Right. Like when you're talking about that, it just reminds me of like something happens and you feel like, you know, you, you failed. Like I'm just thinking of of people that feel like when they get laid off or they get mm-hmm. fired or, you know, let go for some reason, the failure that that um, over the, it overcomes them. Right. But yeah. you're, you know, what you're saying here is you keep playing, mm-hmm. you keep playing. It's hard. It's challenging. It's uncomfortable, but you keep playing. Yes. And, and one of the things I've been thinking about is like, and I even sort of in my draft notes, I sort of named this episode embracing a practice of failure, right? We talk about right. making mindfulness a practice and all the things we do that we make a practice. I think the practice of failure is pretty important. And, and specifically for this last point of Jules, right, that uh, video games can help develop growth mindsets and counteract learn helplessness. They offer clear goals, a fair chance at success and rewards for achievement. It gives us all the like it's set up to give us all the dopamine fun that we could possibly want as long as we can get over the fact that it's hard to fail. And making right. a practice of failure actually makes failing easier and more uh, easy to adapt to and be resilient in the face of. Right. Um, so go ahead. I found this quote, uh, failure doesn't mean game over. It means try again with experience. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that great? Unknown. I don't know who wrote that or who said that, but I love that. I don't know. I like it. I, I, I think that there is like, when we talk about practice of mindfulness, like this is another one from Mark Searles at Kotaku and describing his victory over the game, dark souls, uh, and it's most notoriously difficult sections, right? So Here's here's what Mark writes. The most common reaction, for me at least, is the calm, zen-like focus of understanding. You've fought this boss many times. You are now aware of his, her, its patterns, and you know how to react to each one. You are currently in the zone. You are having the dream run of, you're having the dream run of dream runs, and you feel utterly invincible. That's the feeling we want to experience in life, right? But we only get there by trying again when it's hard. Mm -hmm. We only get Mm -hmm. there by sending out the 50th resume after failing at the 49th. We only get there, right, by getting up in the morning and walking the dog and getting on the rowing machine, uh, you know, after trying to lose that last 10 pounds or build that last bit of muscle or increase that last few minutes of endurance that we're trying to get to the other side of. And I think that is... Uh, that's a, a real lesson. Now, the, mm-hmm. the, the just a little appendix to all of this is Anna Lorena Fabriguez, the author of The Learning Game, who is ta- who who uh, you know she wrote the, the book, which is designed around thinking about how we educate our kids and gaming and education. And and she opens with the with we love Mark Rober uh, around here. Mark Rober is the he's a former NASA and Apple engineer, and he now has this incredible YouTube channel where he builds stuff and make squirrels jump through hoops and and really teach <laughs> experimentation, right? He's a he's an incredible educator. And he calls this the the Super Mario effect, right? That um th- he did this experiment and it revealed that when mistakes are not penalized, people are more likely to keep trying, leading to higher success rates. Uh that this should be applied to en- to education in uh, Fabriga's terms, but I think to everything, right? Enhance learning outcomes by focusing on the end goal and not penalizing mistakes, right? Because mm-hmm. as soon as I get a D on a math test, I'm less likely to be interested in becoming a mathematician, right? It's the anomalous student that turns a D into a, a career in mathematics. Yes. I just want to say, so I was watching the TED Talk with Carol Dweck, who is the creator Dweck, of the growth yeah. mindset. Dweck, right. yeah. Dweck. And she was saying um, about with grades that instead of like a D or an F, it's just a not yet. Yeah. So you're perfect. just not yet right now. Not not yet. Yeah. But but you're going to get there. Yes. That yeah. makes it a lot more motivating. Right, right. And and that is that goes straight back to teaching through like teaching me as an adult through games, which had formerly taught me through penalty, through right. money and penalty. Right. That uh, so 
games we know provide environment where failure is part of the process and it's not penalized. Um, what is it about games that keep people generally optimistic in the face of failure? And what do we learn from them? Even people who rage turn over the Monopoly board, right? They'll learn <laughs> how to play Monopoly. Uh, right. And like, case in point. Well, now like, they really know yeah, how to play. They know how to play Monopoly. Tips. Yeah, right, right. That, that was a, <laughs> a past episode uh, a tip for never having to play Monopoly again because you won't be invited. The, the <laughs> educational system is still at a place where we penalize failures because it's a battleship that takes a long time to turn. But incorporating these, these you know, uh, uh, tools of gamification, of, of dealing with failure, can teach kids how failure's okay, how failure's okay to keep going. And I think we as adults with ADHD can learn from that, right? We can learn about the game of life by just failing at it and embracing that a little bit a, a little bit more uh, that that the end goal right is is not the failures along the way it's not the d on the math test right the end goal is integrating mathematics into your life in a way that you're fluent at it at some level mm -hmm. and talking about fluency you can only get there by screwing up and learning from mm -hmm. those mistakes mm -hmm. uh, so i i feel like I that is that. is really really powerful so that's that's what I throw up in, in your face yes. right now. Uh, it's great. Where do you stand? Well, I, I think it's great. And the only thing that I wanted to to add from um, a coaching point of view is is just expanding that growth mindset idea, yeah. right? That it means that you thrive on challenge. You don't see failure as a way to describe yourself, but as a springboard for growth and developing your abilities. Uh, your intelligence, your talents, they're all susceptible, susceptible, susceptible. Susceptible. This is my problem. <laughs> susceptible. 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 Yep. That Did was I it. Say it. Yeah. Okay. See, I failed, but I kept practicing. But you kept practicing. I didn't give up. <laughs> I did not give up. Nope. Right there. <laughs> to growth. Yes. Uh, and then, okay, now I'm going I'm to say the last name wrong again, because I think I did the first time. Carol Dweck. That's it. Awesome. Carol Dweck. Yep. Yes. So she says that in the growth mindset, failure can be a painful experience, but it doesn't define you. Mm -hmm. It's a problem to be faced, dealt with, and learned from. And I think that this is really important because I, I talk to so many people with ADHD as clients and, and listeners of the podcast. And I think that a lot of times it can feel like it defines them, that that's all that they remember. They don't remember the the good they don't remember the praises they remember the times that they got wrote up or the times that they got talked to or about and so i i, I thought that that was a really important um piece of it so just with that reminder yeah. of understanding what a growth mindset is and catching yourself you know listening to yourself and and figuring out where are you where do you stand are you at a growth mindset or are you at a fix the mindset because that awareness immediately is that first step towards change because now you can you know, start to flip the script a little bit. It's so interesting. And I, I kind of like to flip the script again, that mm -hmm. failures, right. As, as Dweck says, failures don't define you, but maybe they should, right. I mean, if everything we're talking about holds true, then our failures in fact are the best definition of who we are today right? How we respond to the lessons that we learn from failure, in fact, are the definition of us. Yes, I, if you I can sort of take like that, that and right? I do too. But that is also a spin of definitely taking that, that those feelings and making yeah. it a positive reaction. Um, so we have to just make sure we get to that positive reaction. And, and I think that, right, yeah. when you can, you can share your story, Mm -hmm. and tell other people about it and have that define you? Absolutely. We yes. just need to make sure that we don't stay in the definition of I failed and I suck and, yeah. you know, I'm a right. bad person. Well, and yeah. because, you know, I, I think that last point, right, replacing failing with learning really refines mm -hmm. that. It says, you know what, I'm, I, am, I am the result of everything I've learned in my life. Yes. And it's just as easy to say everything I've failed at in my life. But everything I've right. learned creates a new, more optimistic me. And maybe that's what helps you get over the deep despair that comes from, yes. you know, the immediate feeling of RSD when you fail, right? When mm -hmm. I fail and that, su that ex single experience defines me. Really what we're looking for is to help ourselves create a tapestry of who we are, 
right. at, a, at any right. given time. And that is made up of more of our learnings in the past than mm-hmm. our, you know, home run successes. Right. Right. And that goes back to what that uh, real was saying. Right. From that social yeah. media is that you learn more from failing than you do from success. Yeah. We want to celebrate those successes. Absolutely. But we also want to learn from when we're yeah, in the middle you, of it. When we're in the not if you let your failures rule you. Right. That's right. really the word. Right. Like yes. failures yeah. can define me and not rule me. And that's the RSD right. challenge that that I'm exactly. letting my failure experience or my perception of my own failure rule my identity. And that's what mm-hmm. we have to stay away from. Mm-hmm. I think I think failure needs a rebranding uh, or, in, around ADHD. And I think it should be a, a, a word that is not a safe word, but a word that is safe to use, not a triggering yes. word. Right. We have to be yes. able to say that word to learn from it. And mm-hmm. uh, and that can be hard when your experience is mired in RSD. And I have yeah. those. <laughs> right. Right. Those 40 right. year old experiences that are so challenging to get to the other side of. So mm-hmm. um, I, I think we need to just every time we say it, it needs a flower emoji next to it. Right. Like I this agree. is how we learn. This is how we learn. Okay. I love it. Thank you, Pete. Wright. Right. That was fun. That was fun. This was great. Thank you. This was a Thank great you. series. I think so, too. I hope we come around to this, especially because I have not one, but two game designers who came back and said, I'm sorry, my schedule's too crazy. Can we do it, you know, later in December? And I said, no, we can't. The door is closed, but maybe not forever. So (laughs) uh, hopefully we'll have an opportunity to come back around to this uh, uh, another time. So. Absolutely. Thank you. thank you so much, Nikki. And thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us today. We appreciate your time and your attention. Don't forget, if you have something to contribute to the conversation, we're heading over to the Show Talk channel in our Discord server. And you can join us right there by becoming a supporting member at the deluxe level or better. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. And we'll see you right back here next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Thank you.